All right, as facts are emerging, we are starting to understand the horrors that the three missing Ohio women went through while they were held captive for a decade. Dr. Daniela Schreier is back with us today, a forensic psychologist mm -hmm. from the uh, Chicago School of Professional Psychology. So many, there are so many questions, and, mm -hmm. and you understand why these girls seem to be wanting to be with their families away from the, the scrutiny and the media and that kind of thing. But talk about specifically when, when you heard this uh, special agent Steve Harvey say the nightmare is over, you would disagree with that and say it's just beginning. Yeah, I looked actually at the screen. I was standing there and I was saying, honey, it just began mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Not only for these three women, because it will really be hard and a long journey to reintegrate, but what we find out is there are still two women actually missing. Mm -hmm. One right. woman actually, she disappeared in the same area in 1995. Mm. And Christina Atkins, she was pregnant five months. And Michelle Knights might have even said that she saw another girl right. there. And the second lady disappeared in 2007, and I want us to say the name, is Ashley Summers. She has uh, actually a heart at her right arm, it's red, mm -hmm. and she also vanished all on the west side of Cleveland. There are no coincidences, ladies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also want to ask you about Michelle Knight because we're hearing more information about how she might need reconstruction mm -hmm. of her face just because of the beatings. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that Michelle or the other two victims will be able to recover and regain their lives? I do think so. Mm. You know what? The human spirit is really very, very strong. Mm -hmm. But remember, uh, in Michelle's case, she was kidnapped first. Right. She spent more than one year potentially alone. And in and darkness, I heard. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And not only that, all the atrocities were directed towards her, sexual abuse, beatings, and only after a year, a second and a third survivor came in. Mm. So remember, probably she was at the bad end of it all. Mm -hmm. You know, Don and I were talking with a Chicago relative of Gina De Jesus, who um, is there now in Cleveland, and, and so many things he said to us were just shocking, but one mm -hmm. of the things he said about Gina's condition is that even though she's a young woman in her early 20s, she appears to be very juvenile, like she's still 14, like she mm -hmm. was the day she was taken. Does mm -hmm. that surprise you? No, it does not, because it's called kind of a halted development. Mm -hmm. Remember, the 10 years between maybe 14 and 24 are very important for a woman's development. You grow up, you form maybe your first romantic relationships, you mm -hmm. even develop st still intellectually. And she was taken from her family a normal day. She went home from school and she never showed up. Another thing in her sense, right, she knew the Castro family. It's uh, actually right. now out that she was the best friend of Castro's daughter. So you knew her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the hurt here is also, I trusted somebody. This one is the dad of my best friend. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Very, very difficult. So many questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in again. We'll continue to talk about this because we know they have so many challenges ahead. Thank, Thank you, you, ladies. Thank you. Let's get over to Mark. There's a lot to cover.